Hey everybody, Scruff here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Hope, hope you're all having a great day. In this video, we're going to be going over all the new features that have been announced, confirmed, all the cool stuff really for FS25. It's, I just wanted to recap and go over it all because, you know, some of the stuff we've, I've kind of learned from the start, just started to forget. It's been, there's been that many cool little things that we've learned along the way, whether it be, you know, the initial announcement, uh, the cinematic trailer, then we, we got a uh, obviously farm kind of stuff like that. I've got a list in front of me. I've been writing down this stuff for the past few days, just trying to make a list of the stuff. But yeah, cinematic trailer, gameplay. Um, we had, again, some gameplay before FarmCon on the YouTube channel, Farming Simulator. Then we had FarmCon. We had some presentations there, map preview. Uh, we've got the crop spinach. We've got a gameplay trailer. Then we had weather effects. You know, a lot of stuff was coming out from GamesCon. Um, and then we've had some B-roll footage from that. And now we're having fact sheet Fridays that are returning as well. So... Yeah, I thought I'd go through it because I want to look. I want to look at the game's history. I want to go back now first and look at FS11. This is a version I didn't even play on. I started playing on FS17. So let's bring them up now. Let's start with FS11. So this is Farming Simulator 11. This is what it first looked like. Now, like I said, I never played this, but we just want to take in the graphics. Now, this is a picture of a field that's obviously doing some straw baling. The sky doesn't look too bad, but everything else does look like we're talking PS1. PS2 times for me, maybe PS2 to be a bit for fair with it, but it's definitely old. It definitely looks um, aged, um, but we, we do see some improvements. So let's move over here. This is now FS13. Never played it, but I can start to see the difference in the machinery, especially. Sheds in the background kind of stuff doesn't look too good. You can see the straw animation as well. It's not too, yeah, it doesn't look that good. And the, the crop itself is very faint, but you can see an improvement from FS11 to FS13. Do you like the sky though? So I will point that out. That sky looks good. So let's go over now to FS15. And again, didn't play this version. I know a lot of people did. You can see that it looks better. I think it's definitely improved. It's not too different from FS13, but if you notice the gaps are in two years. I know from FS19 to FS22, we had a three year gap and that's obviously carried on now into FS25. So maybe, you know, they can do a bit more with that time. They're only a small dev team as well, Giants are. They're not like some AAA company that have got you know a massive development team they have got a small dev, dev team um so they obviously can't do as much uh, but i'm quite happy with the I'm, I'm quite happy with the progress from when i started fs17 to to what we visualize now in fs25 but yeah it's not too bad the equipment looks good you know definitely looks old and dated if i was playing this right now i'd be probably be a little bit disappointed with the graphics so now we're on to fs17 this is FS17. Now, this is the first one I played. I absolutely loved FS17. Started playing on console. This is how I fell in love with the game. And I actually, that just nostalgia for me. I think the one thing I did like about FS17 was the color. It was like toned differently and it just felt better. And obviously the seasons and all that stuff, I could go on for hours about it. But uh, yeah, FS17 was a, a hit for me. So it's always going to be a bit of a biased opinion because that because nostalgia, the first game I played. But I was quite happy with it. And I feel like the graphics of the vehicles got better, but they did also look different. Now, what I will say is FS19 did jump up in regards, but I don't think it jumped up enough. Um, I didn't see too much of a difference in FS19, 17, when you talk about graphics. It wasn't a bit of improvement, don't get me wrong. You can start seeing that there is more looking like it's getting close to what we see now in FS22. So there we're on to FS22, the game we're all playing right now. Graphics are good, quite happy with them. They definitely need an improvement. They are falling behind, in my opinion, but I'm very happy with the... Yeah, with the amount of changes we're going to go over in this video that's happened, especially to the Giants engine um, in FS25. And yeah, I think if you agree now by looking at this, the definition, the foliage, the fullness, the lighting, the shadowing, yeah, it's it's all an improvement, um, especially the crop types. I think if you go back now, just quickly, if I scoot back to the crop type here and you look at the density straight away there's no gaps through it and i know that was sorghum so it's not like probably a fair representation but this it's just too it's, it's a lot more full and even in the distance it looks better i think that was important to do though just kind of look as a transition for the days of fs11 to now fs25 right so the most important bit let's get into all the new stuff coming to fs25 and why it's an improvement on fs22 alone just for all the new features that we're going to see the first thing i want to talk about is maps because we we know we're going to get three maps at the start so we're going to get the asia map now as i'm recording this there's no information we see no pictures really of the asia map the only thing i've got for, about the asia map is the fact that we're going to have obviously rice and everything but we'll get into crops in a second 
basically the only thing we've we've visually seen really is that initial cinematic trailer so as you can see now this is just some of it now this isn't going to be gameplay it's not going to look like this exactly but you can get some kind of idea on that but we have had a lot more information when it comes to the us map so this is the second of three maps that are going to be in the base game of fs25 and it's called riverbend springs we've had a we had a presentation at FarmCon, and we also have had um, a blog and a map review recently as well from Giant. So a lot of information has come out from Riverbend Springs. It looks like it's going to be a detailed map, a lot going on. Really nice river running through it. Um, there's a lot going on. It's it's one of them where I think it's they've definitely made a good map that I kind of want to play on. Who knows how it's going to turn out? You know, might be one of them ones where I'm thinking, yeah, it's not as good, but we'll find out within time. But from the information they've given out, I'm quite happy with it. We're going to have new trees, new bushes, new grass, new ground textures. There's new flowers, kind of just like random foliage you'd see within the grass, you know, on the side of the roads and stuff. And we've obviously got the new crops again. We'll go into them individually. Um, but I'm just going to go and throw up some pictures as I'm talking through this of Riverbend Springs so you can see it firsthand. It's going to be an animal trader on there that they made a point of within their um, presentation um, at FarmCon. Now, we usually get an animal trader, but I think what they're trying to point out is it's going to be animated now, which is something that we've not seen before in base game maps. We've seen it in a few modded maps. I can think of a couple, Hoff Bergman for one, but we're definitely going to see it now in Riverbend Springs. So that's, that's new. Um, you've got new fences as well, so that's going to be good if you want to customise your farm. Um, or anything like that but it's nice to see that on on the map as well this is going to be a farmer's market on the map it's going to be an interactive one so interactive shells so the more you take as produce you're going to see that which i think is a nice touch because you, you know there's some kind of feedback to your gameplay and the hard work you're going to put into that um, with interiors so it's got interiors that are going to be interactive shells going back to productions we did pick up on a, a few details from the presentation at farmcon about the map not much though but we've got small production units, new productions, and buildable farmhouses. Now, that's the thing that stood out to me the most. And when they say buildable farmhouses, what they actually included within within the, the presentation was just a picture. It was like a, 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 a log kind of farmhouse, log-built farmhouse with the stones at the bottom. So it just makes me think, are we going to be taking things to it and produce it, building? We don't know yet, but I think what we can take from this is all the productions that are going to be on the map are going to be more interactive. You're going to visualize it more. So if you set a production running, you should see some animations of that going on. But I do like Riverbend Springs, and I think it's a nice map as a starting map for FS25, and I'm looking forward to it. The third map is a map we've all heard of. I'm going to put a couple of pictures up now. It's Solonka, but what it, they have stated, it's an improved version of Solonka. So imagine like a an upgraded graphical version of it, because obviously it's on FS25. We shouldn't see much else as far as i know maybe some production buildings that are kind of tailor into the new ones in fs25 probably but again i'm only guessing we don't know anything else except it's going to be zelunka right so let's move on and we'll go straight to what i thought was the best presentation and it was the engine presentation we learned a lot of stuff about that i'm going to throw up some information on screen for you some pictures and all that stuff but let's talk about some of the really cool stuff that's coming so we've got improved fog dynamic shadows We've got weather effects now, which is such a good thing. We, we've obviously seen a lot about the fog, fog simulation, all that, but it is a nice thing that they've added in. If it's not too over the top, I am worried that we're going to see it too much. And if we do, um, you know, like a kid with a new toy wants to show it off too much, it needs to be subtle for this to work really well. But it's nice to have the option to have this weather effect in game. So I'm looking forward to that straight away. I think the fog's going to be immersive. It can suit really well if it's timed right, so in the mornings, morning dew over the fields, but it needs to disperse when the sun comes out. And again, you know, in the evenings or even over just accumulated water or something. But it is going to be a welcome change for me. So Giants did state in their presentation that it's non-uniform density. It'll have a dynamic accumulation in valleys and water, and it's changing with weather and the time of day, which is exactly what I was just saying. But I will wait until I've seen that firsthand. So they've also improved the lighting and it looks really good. We've got volumetric lighting now with sun shadows and god rays. Now, god rays are crazy when you think about it, but what are they? It's a it's imagine like a cone in front of you can visualize of a light breaking through a tree and the gaps and stuff like that. And it's volumetric lighting. So if you know it'll pick up like maybe if there is fog, it'll kind of disperse the light differently. There's a load that goes into that. All you need to understand is it makes the game look better. It makes the game visually look better. There'll also be volumetric lighting for local lights, so things like street lamps and vehicles, which is going to be nice. And then we've got shadows, cloud shadows, fully dynamic based on actual clouds. So if you 
looking down at the field, for example, and you can almost see just kind of like light patches popping through where the sun's breaking through the shadows. Small details like that build up and hopefully add to the immersion of the map. You know, if this was just one single thing on its own, it wouldn't be a bigger deal, you know, like a, da a cloud shadow. But if you're adding all these up with everything else, it should just make the game completely, you know, look a lot better. And I, and I do think they focus quite a lot on the shadows. We've got these things called soft shadowing now, where so the further away the shadow has travelled from the object that's cast it, it starts to it starts to get fuzzy, basically. It starts to not be as a clear shadow. Um, so basically it's blurrier. And, that's a, and if you go outside and look at an object that's cast in a shadow, you'll notice where the shadow's been cast from that object it's closest to the shadow, it's quite clear and precise, the edges of this shadow, but as it gets further away, it gets blurrier. So that's going to be really nice to see. We've now had an improved kind of nighttime feature when it comes to lighting and shadowing especially. So if two vehicles are shining a light, they did show this in the presentation, if their headlights are shining at each other, you know, we've got merged shadow lights now where, you know, the shadows from the vehicle are taking effect. It's not just a simple shadow, it's a bit more complicated because you've obviously got two two vehicles shining lights and that's going to obviously create some really crane shadows going on but i like the fact that they've added that in again it's going to be one that we actually visualize and see in game we might not notice it who knows but i like the idea of it and that's hopefully it's going to make a small difference so let's move on to weather effects then because i know we've got like weather events to get to but that's not what we're going to go on about now we're talking about weather effects actual things that are affecting as you're playing the game uh, let's talk about this first though super excited for this which is additional mud on tires so as you can see now, there's like four stages on this tire where it's clean, it's picked up a bit of dirt, but it's just a texture. But on the, the third one there, it's got an accumulation. And on the fourth one, it's even more of accumulation of mud um, on the tire. So it's, it's, it says it's reduced whilst driving. So if you're in a field, it'll probably pick it up in bad weather. But then when you get onto a tarmac road, you'll see this. Yeah, you'll see this kind of sticking to the tires and then falls off in the road. But when I was watching the, the presentation after I got back from FarmCon and using the translation... Uh, into English. Uh, Stefan did state that it behaves differently in gameplay, so maybe your t vehicle will behave differently on the road um, when it's got loads of mud on it, and you'll actually see this falling off. So it'll visualize parts of the mud falling off the tires, which I think is super cool. Can't wait for that. Another really good one is rain effects on vehicles. In the past, we've never actually visualized a vehicle looking like it's been in, you know, been in rain. It looks like it's wet. Now we can see that visualized on tires, on the on the bodywork, and also on the on the on the windscreen as well. We've had it in the past where rain falls. We we get the wipers moving. All you've seen is the animation, but there's no smear where the where the water droplets on the window are being obviously moved away by the the wiper action. We should be getting to see that now. That's not actually been confirmed that the wiper does that, but I'd be very surprised if it didn't because they have now added water droplets onto the machine, so onto the bodywork, onto the tyres, and also onto the window when it's raining. And we should also get that with the other weather effects that we've got in place, which is heavy winds that are going to come from the twisters and also the hail. So we should see that a lot more. And sound effects comes is, is included in that. So yeah, can't wait for that. And yeah, we're also going to get it on the roads as well. So on the environment around us, we're going to get improved rain visuals, rain splashes, a wet look, so a darker color texture on the road, for example, and it'll have a more reflectiveness as well. So it's got to shine to it because it's wet. Again, really cool, but you can visualize the rain now dropping, but also when it hits the ground, you've got a little splash, tiny, tiny splash of each droplet. So that's amazing. That's, that's a big improvement for me. It definitely needed looking at. So in, in FS25, I'm really glad they've done that. So carrying on with water quickly, trying to get through these now. There's a, there's a lot on my list that, again, just goes to show how much FS25 has added quite a lot of things to the game. Uh, but water dynamics, we've now got an, an interactive water simulation. And the reason for this mainly is because we're obviously having a crop rice where it's going to be in a paddy and it's a flooded field. So we needed some kind of physics for that. You can't just drive a tractor and not see like a, a puddle of water splash or you can't see the ripple effect. But we're going to visualize that now within... Um, FS25 so we've got some kind of physics for that and it's also been confirmed that with the high winds and the weather and the you know um, uh, the twisters that are going to come along that's also going to have an effect we're going to see the water ripple waves whatever the water becomes more agitated so that's going to be really cool to see another thing they've added in is clear coat paint uh, simulation basically a nod to the the way that these vehicles are created in the paint where you've usually got a body so it could be plastic or metal or whatever the body's made out of then you put a primer coat on which is quite um, it's quite coarse and it, the base coat color that you visualize when you see looking at a tractor that sticks to that primer coat and then on top of that uh, they put a clear coat 
So the clear coat's a shiny coat. It's a protective coat, but we're going to visualize that now in the game. We never had that before. We just had the paint base color, uh, but now we should have a paint uh, clear coat on top. So the next thing we spoke about was the terrain and the way that you can edit that. You might think this is for modders, but it's really not. It's for gameplay as well and for players when customizing a farm. If you've ever used like the sculpting tool, you notice that you can only do a certain area. And I think it's currently set to a two meter block, but they've now changed it to a one meter block, which means you can be more precise when maybe raising, flattening, paint textures, anything like that in game. So that's really good to see because now we can be really, you know, we can be double the precision than what we could be before about how we want to raise that ground or flatten that ground or kind of make a, a slope or anything in game. So yeah, we, we could, we've now got a one meter block instead of a two meter block basically to make that, to customize the ground in any way we want in the sculpting tool. So that's going to be really good to use in game. Now, obviously we've all spoke about the ground deformation, but basically what they've done is added a layer on the ground is 12.5 centimeters technically of ground that can be influenced in game so that can be in a field with a tractor and so on imagine that's ground soft it can just be changed and adjusted and we're calling it ground deformation now it's not dynamic ground or dynamic uh, in a way that it's going to be a permanent change it is just a visual change for so long and then after you know you move on to another area they will reset it might work really well it might be something that you kind of just forget easily but it's a nice thing to to add in. I mean, I'm interested to try it out and see it in action. But yeah, we've got a displacement mapping basically for fields. So another one that's really good and probably forgotten as well, but it shouldn't be because it's, it should be a great thing to visualize in the game. is the fact that they've improved the sky. They've improved the sky and they've also improved the starlit sky. So we're going to see stars now in the sky at night. They've improved the sky, which means it's not just the day, but also in the nighttime as well. And they've also enhanced the moon. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that in FS25 because small things like that we don't think about, but we don't even have stars in the game at the moment at night. So, you know, I can't wait to see them small little details. Another good one is double-sided rendering. Now, it might not mean a lot to people that were just playing the game, but to simplify it and just tell you the benefit is that everything's going to look more full, more dense. So a tree will look better because it's double-sided rendering. So imagine the foliage looking twice as full, twice as dense. Same goes to all crop types. And because of it, it's not actually going to put any, you know, extra strain onto the system as well, um, which is going to be good for console players. And yeah, it hopefully will make a massive difference visually. Some of the new gameplay mechanics of including things like swaffing. So we can, we can now do swaffing on the map, which is when uh, so when a field's ready to harvest, we can actually just chop it all down without threshing it, drop it to the ground, and then you pick it up in these swaths, and then the harvester threshes it that way. Now, we just saw the header and the actual McDon swather, but I don't think we saw the actual pickup machine uh, equipment that's going to use that. But it's nice to add swaffing into the game. And if you played FS22, there is a few maps out there that include swaffing. There's a few mods as well. So, yeah, it's going to be nice to try that out. It's something new. Another thing that was really cool, and I'll put the video up now, is we learned about the baling and the changes to baling. We're going to have things like net wrap, twine, wrap, actual wrap for silage bales that we have to now use as a consumable. These are mods that we've seen included in FS22, but they are going to be added in now into the base game. So that's going to be really cool to see that we can do the baling. Um, and we can, you know, we can, we've got consumables now for baling, like got the, the wrap for silage bales, we've got the twine, and we've also got the netting as well for round bales and the twine for square bales. And we've got the, the wrap to use if we're making silage. So that's going to be a nice addition. I think it was probably one of the most requested things for FS25 is GPS steering and improved workers. And they have definitely improved. It's going to be something that PC, PC players will be using um, because it's probably just as efficient as what I've seen as course players. Now, I know a course player is probably a bit more customizable and you can set it where you want it to go and stuff like that. Still think we're going to get some version of auto drive because it's not on the lines of auto drive and using that in combination with GPS is with the uh, course play currently is a must. It's like a must have for PC players. But I like the fact that they've got uh, and it's such an improved worker. There was a video they showed us and it was really clever. I was doing it turning constantly in the field and it did a good job of it. Didn't miss too many bits as well. But the GPS steering, I'm, I have to be honest, this is where my first criticism is going to come. I'm, I'm on the fence with it because from what I know in GPS is, you know, we should be able to customize it personally. If I, if I want to go a certain direction and just keep that straight line with the width of the tool I'm on, I should be able to do that and just turn it on. I'll do the turning myself kind of thing and then just turn it on along the straights. But the way it's kind of working is 
you press a button it'll automatically align you onto the line that the work would use and then you can tell it to kind of stick to it you turn your gps on it'll stick to that line but that's it that's the line that's given to you if you don't want to do that you'll have to do it yourself another way so i don't think it's as customizable as it should have been so i still think we're going to see a gps mod probably for pc players and me who uses the uh, vehicle control add-on i'll probably carry on using that because i still want the freedom to make a choice basically of where i can use gps but it is a cracking thing to add in console players are going to get a lot of use out of it and it is going to help you out it's just like i said if you wanted to do diagonal passes or you wanted to do a you know horizontal passes um, instead of the vertical ones or the basically the way it's set up for you Right, so let's move on to crops then. As, as of now, we've technically got three confirmed ones, but we have actually got four confirmed ones at the moment. So the first two are going to be rice, and they're obviously tailored to this Asian map that we're going to hopefully get some more information on soon. Now, it is called rice in-game, but I'm calling it wet rice because it's the one where we need the rice paddies. Now, from what I understand with the rice paddies, we place them down like, a, like the fence tool now in FS22. We flood that field. You can see like a little pump that you can obviously, obviously purchase and place down. Uh, you fill the fields with water and then you can either grow the rice saplings yourself in a greenhouse and then pick them up and use the, the, the new equipment that's going to be provided for planting and harvesting uh, the rice. Or you can just buy them from the shop so you don't have to grow them in a greenhouse. And then we go into the rice paddy with the tool, the planter. We plant in the saplings, we let it grow. We do our normal stuff like fertilizer and that's and so on and as time goes by the water gets absorbed by the crop itself and we're left with a dry field which is where our harvest is going to come in now it's not a standard harvester unlike the other rice type it is a specific harvester that's going to be used for for harvesting wet rice uh, but it is a really cool addition but this is definitely a unique one and i know they do like to do that each time around so i'm looking forward to this so the next one is called long grain rice, but I'm calling it dry rice as well because we just plant it into a field. We get a harvester, you know, they show us in the video, the New Holland C7, I think it is. Um, and we just pick it up as long grain rice. It's straightforward enough, but at least we've got two new rice types. So the third crop that we know about, which not long ago we got the confirmation is spinach. And you probably all know about it. The unique thing about this is we can harvest it twice in a calendar year. So we plant it in April, harvest it in June, we plant it again, and then we can harvest it again in September. Uh, we have got a unique tool to harvest it, which looks really good. It's the Oxbow, the MKB40R. As you can see now, it looks pretty cool. It's got a nice tip on it, and it's not one of them ones where it's going to take forever. But yeah, we can sow once and we can harvest twice, and I think that's what they led on in the blog as well. So that's going to be a really good crop to try out. Hopefully it'll give good returns. And then the final one, which I haven't actually got any pictures on. I'll give a shout out to FSG for this because I didn't see this at all when he found it on um, someone that was, uh, I think it was somebody that uh, was at Gamescom and was walking around on, on the demo version of the game and saw a field and they walked through it and it said peas. So we should be getting some, some peas in FS25. Now that means that there's one crop left. Now, no, as far as I know, nobody knows what that's going to be. We can all make our guesses, but there's definitely going to be one more. Uh, but we are getting... Two types of rice, we're getting spinach and peas as new crops in Farming Simulator 25. So this is up there for me as one of the favourite things I'm looking forward to. And it was announced around the time of Gamescom. We got a, a gameplay trailer from Giant Software and in it we got a lot of information. But the thing that stood out the most to me was baby animals. Super cool. We are now finally getting baby animals into the game and they're going to have different growth stages as well. They're not just going to be kind of like a baby and then fully grown. We're going to have stages in between. Uh, we've also got some new animal types coming. We've got buffalo, uh, water buffalo. We've also got some goats that are going to be coming to the game as well. But yeah, can you imagine now we can have piglets, chicks, lambs. So that's going to be a really cool thing to add in and should bring in some different productions. We've, we've heard about the fact that we're probably going to be getting like things like goat's cheese as well. So expect some new productions from that. But baby animals is a must. It should have happened a while ago for me. Um, luckily, we've been having some really good mods that have been keeping players going. But unfortunately for console players, they've not got that. So yeah, that's another new thing coming to FS25, which is now we're going to have a couple new animals. But the main thing is we're going to have baby animals and growth stages for these animals. We're getting to the end now. This is the penultimate bit of information we've got that's confirmed anything new coming to FS25. 
and it's about weather changes, a particular weather events. So what we're going to be getting now in the game is random events like twisters that can do damage to crops. They can also do damage to bales that have been left out in fields. And you'll see like a darkening clouds in the sky. You'll see in the top right corner, um, it's, it looks like a twister sign. So you can see the change of the weather. Um, we're going to get heavy rain and wind that you can see as well from this hail storms and it, obviously because of the changes they've done in the engine side of things with obviously adding more visuals in so we can see the wet look on tires you can see the droplets hitting this windscreen and on the on the, the actual bodywork of the vehicle that you're using it's going to be super cool we should also get some changes as well to the way the trees look when the wind's blowing heavy the way the water looks when the wind's blowing heavy and obviously heavy rain as well but it's going to be cool to have this in now i'm a uk player and i'll be honest if i'm playing on oxy's next map on fs25 Twisters aren't going to be on that, let's be honest. He's going to make it. He's already confirmed that he's going to make it without Twisters. But it's going to be nice to try it out on the US map. It's going to be nice for US map creators to put him into somewhere that you'd expect to see maybe in a map they're creating. Um, I like the idea of it. I think it's, you know, anything that they're adding something new in. But I will be honest, I'm more focused on things like hail. I would have liked to see probably more a focus on snow because i know we do have snow in the game right now but maybe like snow drifts heavy snow you know variations of how the snow's fallen and so on uh, and the severity of that uh, because it's more common and it's more something i can relate to now again the twisters do happen it's something cool it's something different to add in but for me my focus what that i saw from that kind of news was the hailstorms but to confirm we are going to get hail we're going to get twisters heavy winds and different weather events going on within fs25 which is again something new to the game but that's pretty much everything. I tried to make this video as short as possible, but it was not easy to do because there's so many new things that I wanted to talk about them. But the aim of this video basically was just to give you a recap of everything we've learned so far about FS25, all the confirmed features, all the new things that are coming to the game. And hopefully, you know, it either sends you one way that you definitely still don't think it's worth it or you definitely are looking forward to the game. But let me know in the comment section. I'd really appreciate to know your honest opinion. Are you excited for FS25? Do you think it's a good upgrade? Or do you think they should have done more? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you're thinking of pre-ordering FS25, I'd highly appreciate it if you could use my link in the video description. It's no extra cost to you. It just helps support me in the Giants Partner Program. Um, so I can maybe move up a level on getting close to silver now. So I really appreciate that. If you are interested, yeah, check out the link in the video description for that. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.